What's up, boxing fans? This is TBE Boxing. Back at you again. Today's topic, Undisputed, Derek James and the Fear of the Walking Bud, the Pre-Fight Analysis. Let's chop it up and see what it's all about. On the road to Paul, huh? That's lucky for riches, huh? That's lucky for riches, huh? Pretty rich on me titties, huh? And I got the glitz, you run up on me, I'ma make you get it. I'ma make you get it. Okay, boxing fans, let's talk some boxing, okay? So, uh, the big fight is here, as you all know. Spence versus Crawford, undisputed. Uh, the wait is over. The fight is tonight. I'm doing this uh, video uh, Saturday morning. Uh, it's like before 8 o'clock in the morning. So I'm doing this uh, video for the fight that's coming up tonight. Spence versus Crawford. Undisputed welterweight division. But before we get into the fight, uh, we're going to take a little trip down memory lane. And uh, we're going to go to the videotape. Okay. So let's go to the videotape and take a look. Uh, of what transpired prior to the fight, you know, finally uh, coming to fruition. Because as you all know, uh, we had to, you know, basically, this has been going on for like close to five years since like 2018, since uh, Crawford went to uh, Welterweight and started calling these guys out, uh, Spence included. And, you know, uh, finally we are here now. But we, it took us a long way to get to here, and it was a winding road. So let's get down to, uh, like I said, let's go back to memory lane. Let's go through memory lane and see how we got to where we are today. Doesn't up, fight brother? anyone. That. Should Earl give him a shot? Who? What now? He, he says if Crawford doesn't fight anyone, should Earl give him a shot? Shot or what? I mean, he still got other guys he's gonna fight or whatever. I mean, his his fight his fight schedule may be planned out. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like after this one, we got another big one. We got another big one. We want to get the three belts, whatever the case may be. But uh, but hey, listen, man, I think that that fight will possibly happen. But I think that if you think about it like this. Okay, so as you can see there, uh, you know, there's this uh, myth going around that, uh, you know, Derrick James being the main one spreading this myth, that Errol Spence did what he said he was going to do. You know, he was going to spin the block, and then he was going to go ahead and fight Terrence Crawford last. But as you can see from that interview, he said that the, the fight between Terrence Crawford may happen. Okay, that's what he said. He, he didn't say it was going to happen, that, 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 that they planned to do this fight. No, that wasn't part of the plan. So he said the fight may happen. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, so all this, you know, rewriting history, talking about what I was, you know, said, said. I mean, when did he say that? A, a, a year ago? This interview was done like maybe three, four years ago. Okay, so we see from this interview that there was really no plans uh, to fight Terence Crawford. And just to make, just to make, you know, make it clear, let's let's, you know, let's continue with this uh, uh, interview. Hold on for a second. We're going to get to it. Uh, here we go. Now, yeah. do you think, do you think him fighting Kill Brook makes him worthy to get a shot at Earl? Is it is the business right? Because he's fighting the British. Put it like this. It it, it what. Let's hold it right there. You, said, you heard what Derrick James said when the, the question was asked, right? He said, no. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't make him worth the fight, uh, 
uh, Errol Spence. Uh, they're talking about uh, Terence Crawford. If he's if he's gonna make if him fighting Caleb Book makes it makes it worthy for him to fight Errol Spence. Now, as you can see, this is before Errol Spence. This is before uh, Book fought either Crawford. I mean, before uh, Crawford fought either. Sean Porter or Kel Book. This has been before that, okay? And they're talking about uh, him fighting Kel Book. Listen very carefully to what Derek James says about this Kel Book, uh, fighting Kel Book, okay? Because he's going to come up again later. From a, from a, the thing about this, he don't have to, it, from beat, him beating Kel Book, he don't have to beat Kel Book to deserve a fight for Earl Spence, right? But what happens is to be able to sell a fight with Earl Spence, he got to beat somebody other than Kel Brook. Kel Brook, British. People ain't watching that. <laughs> I mean, that's what I was trying to get. Is he going to sell? Is that, would, he, would that be the fight for him to sell to get in position to fight Earl? That, that was the better question. You said he not, nah, he's mean, British. I think, I think that people, I don't think that people, I don't think people going to really, really watch that. I think that him fighting Sean Porter was, a, put it like this, from a fan's perspective, Sean Porter's bigger than he is. Because he's been in bigger fights. Mm -hmm. Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia. If you look at his numbers and, and the fans that the tickets that have been sold from the fights that he participated in, right? He has a bigger base. So that's Derek James saying that uh uh Sean Porter, who According to Errol Spence, couldn't sell out a, a barbecue. Derek James is here saying that uh, Sean Porter got a bigger base than uh, Terrence Crawford. Just to be clear, this is what he's saying. Let's continue. So I think that this will broaden, bring the bring the people who don't know him, and that's a big deal. I mean, I think that. You sell it and people sell. It. Man, you don't have a choice. I think the Kel Brook fight is a good. It's a good fight, great fight, phenomenal fight. I think that the fan. Let's hold it right there. So you're saying that if Crawford was to fight Kel Brook, that it would be a phenomenal fight, a great fight, right? That's what he said. Phenomenal. Now, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, in terms of Sean Porter and his fan base, you know, like I said, he's saying that. You know, Sean Porter got a bigger fan base than uh <laughs> than uh Terrence Crawford. You know, this is what Derek James is saying, right? And uh, you know, the whole thing that we have to understand here is that all of this uh maneuvering that we saw with Errol Spence and you know about fighting Crawford about uh, you know across the street, uh he hasn't fought nobody, uh he needs to fight somebody for all of that actually came from Derek James. Okay, this is what you, this is what we are seeing here. All right, Derek James is the one that started all those rumors about you know Crawford not be you know. In other words, what I'm telling you is that Derek James was one of the main people trying to make sure that this fight between Crawford and Spence never happened. Right? He's making all kind of excuses. You know, you got to fight Sean Porter first. He got to fight uh, uh, Kel Brook before he fight uh, uh, Errol Spence. So. All these conditions, you know, that we saw that was put in front, all these obstacles that was put in front of the fight between Terence Crawford and Errol Spence actually came from, uh, you know, Derek James, basically. But uh, let's continue. The fan base, I mean, you know, they will be like, you know, I don't know what, I don't, I don't know how they will feel about it. And you know what's funny is that. People say, what well, you hating on him or something. I mean, because I think he even said that. Somebody said that. I'm not hating on him. No, I didn't say one thing. I didn't say one thing bad about it. I... <laughs> so that's Derek James again. You know, uh, again, let's he say he's not saying anything bad about Crawford, but we're going to show that's not correct. But anyway, the bottom line is that he said that. Let's go back to what he said about the Kell Book fight, right? This will broaden, bring the, bring the fans perspective. Sean Kel Brook, British. People ain't watching that. <laughs> I mean, that's what I was trying to get. Is he going to sell? Is that, would, he, would that be the fight for him to sell to get in position to fight Earl? That, that was the better question. 
You said he not. Nah, he mean, greedy. I think, I think that people. I don't think that people. I don't think people gonna really what really watch that. I think that him fighting Sean Porter was a put it like this from a fan's perspective. Sean Porter's bigger than he is because he's been in bigger fights. Mm -hmm. Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia. If you look at his numbers and, and the fans that the tickets that have been sold from the fights that he participated in, right? He has a bigger base. So I think that this will broaden bring the bring the people who don't know him. And that's the big deal. I mean, I think that you sell it and people sell, it. man, you don't have a choice. I think the Kel Brook fight is a good it's a good fight. Great fight, phenomenal fight. I think Okay, so you saw what he said about the Kel Brook fight. Right? It's a great fight, it's a phenomenal fight. All right. Uh let's fast forward a little bit, a couple of, you know, maybe a year or two later and hear what he had to say. Come remember here we are seeing that all of these obstacles put in front of the, you know, the fight is again is coming from the, the mouth of uh, Derek James because my contention is that Derek James never wanted this fight that's we're going to see tonight between Spence and Crawford because I think that Derek James is basically, you know, a fight between uh, Crawford and Spence for Derek James is a nightmare. Okay, he has to prepare. Uh, Spence for a fight with Crawford, and I don't think that he believed that he could prepare Spence for a fight in Crawford. I don't think he believed that Spence could beat Crawford. And this is what all this negativity coming from Derek James is really all about. But let's continue. Over the weekend, we saw uh, Terrence Crawford uh, knock out uh, Kel Brook in, in four rounds in a uh, phenomenal uh, way. Did you see? The fight and what'd you make of how uh, Terrence looked in there? I watched the fight. I mean, I had no comments on I mean, I don't know how it. I mean, I don't know how to take it. I mean, you know. I mean, did he? Kel did Brook you think he looked out. well? Like, you know, I, I know Arrow. It, you went with Arrow to fight uh, Kel Brook. You know, like, how, how did you feel Kel looked in there, and how did you feel that Terrence looked in there? I think Kel Brook looked pretty decent. I mean, you know what I'm saying. I mean, I think that. What I think is that. Everybody looks good hitting the heavy bag, hitting the mitts, you know what I mean? And I think that that's kind of when he was landing those shots, it was like hitting the mitts. But it's like when you get hit back, that kind of tells where you are, right? Not so much about because, I mean, everybody looks great hitting the bag, hitting the mitts. And that's what I, that's what I think about it. I mean, you know, who was hitting the mitts, who, you know? Who was hitting the mitts? Was it uh, Terrence? Kel was. Kel, okay, okay. Kel was the one landing all the shots, uh -huh. most of the shots, you know. And then I said, like I said, everybody looks good to hit in the mitts, or it's about when you get hit back. Mm. That's, that, was, that was when he couldn't, you know. So that lets you know it was kind of shot. And I mean, even going into the fight, they had to know that. They had to know it was shot or whatever, but you know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so here we go with Derek James again. Right, so now he's saying that. Uh, remember, he before he said that a fight between he's the one that actually made a point of talking about Kell Brook fighting uh, uh, Crawford. You know, so you know, basically to 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 boost up uh, Crawford's uh, selling uh, potential, right? And he said that was a it's a great fight. It was a it would be a great fight. It'd be a fantastic fight. You know, he was big on the fight until after the fight happened. After until after Crawford knocked out uh, Kell Brook, now he's saying, "Oh, Kell Brook was shot," <laughs> but he the one that brought up. Uh, he was the one that brought up Kell Brook fighting uh, Crawford first, really. Okay, but now you know the, after Crawford knocked out Kell Brook, Kell Brook was shot, according to Derek James. But let's continue. Did you, by chance, listen to the comments that uh, Bob said after the fight uh, about uh, making a potential fight uh, with Errol and, and Terrence? Uh, yeah, I, I've heard of them. I, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't watch a lot of media. I don't watch yeah. a lot of uh, This is never live from Derek James here. He doesn't watch a lot of media. He, he's always saying that, you know, I don't watch a lot of media. I didn't watch the fight. I don't watch Terrence Crawford. I don't watch this. I don't watch that. What do you do? You're a coach. You're supposed to be watching these guys fight, you know. But according to Derek James, uh, you know, he doesn't watch a lot of media. He's always saying that, you know, uh, making up that excuse. But, you know, let's continue. 
people to send me stuff. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron, you know, uh, commented that if you, you know, the PBC and, and you guys or Danny, whoever wins, really wants to make a big pay-per-view fight, a real big pay-per-view fight, they have to come in and fight Terrence. And that's um, Arrow has been avoiding a fight with Terrence. He doesn't want to fight him because what we saw with Kel would happen with Errol and Bob said, you know, it would happen in, in, in around the same time. Uh, I'm talking about, I don't even know. I mean, I don't, I mean, I have no idea what he's talking about. Cause I, like I said, I didn't hear him say that, but I mean, man, listen, you know, like, I think they just want, I mean, they want something. We have somebody, we have Danny Garcia in front of us, who, as I stated before, even if you add Kill Book on his resume, still doesn't add up to what Danny Garcia has done. So what are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like, he, if you think about this, Danny Garcia has the deepest resume other than Manny Pacquiao. This is in boxing, period. And as a champion, I'll say on the pound for pound list, he has the weakest resume in boxing. <laughs> All right, so let's unpack that. So here, Derek James is saying that uh, Terrence Crawford has the weakest resume in boxing. As a pound-for-pound fighter, he got the weakest resume. And he's saying that Danny Garcia has a better, uh, has the deepest resume in boxing, period, than a deeper resume than Terrence Crawford, right? Remember now, uh, just, just think about this for a second. Remember that Terrence Crawford is a three-weight, three-division champion, right? In three different divisions, he's been a champion. Uh, Garcia, Danny Garcia, it was a champion at 140 and a champion at uh, 147, for briefly at 147. He lost the, 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 the championship on his first defense, a title that he never really fought for because he got the title through an elimination, okay? So... Uh, you know, uh, that's how he got the title, uh, right? Uh, and he never actually, and, and his first defense was against, uh, uh, Sean Porter, and he lost the title to Sean Porter in a close fight, right? So that was the only fight, you know, in that elimination fight, basically that was the only fight that Danny Garcia won at a welterweight. Every other fight, he, you know, that he had at welterweight, he lost. You know, when he fought against, you know, uh, Porter, he lost, you know, he fought against, uh, uh, Spence, he lost. So all of Danny Garcia's big fights at welterweight, he lost. But here and there, James say he got a better resume than Terrence Crawford. And uh, let's not forget that uh, not only did Danny Garcia, you know, lose all the, his big fights at 147, okay, but at 140, he was a better fighter at 140, but he never became undisputed at 140, and Terrence Crawford was undisputed at 140, right? But here we have Derek James saying that Danny Garcia's resume is deeper, okay? And, you know, uh, it's amazing, uh, you know, what comes out of this guy's mouth uh, when, he's, when, he, when it comes to Crawford. It just seems that any time uh, Derek James talked about Crawford, He's always irrational, and he's just capping and talking all type of nonsense. You know, he just he just can't seem to get it together when when Crawford, the subject of Crawford, comes up. He just goes, you know, he gets discombobulated for some reason, and gets emotional, and you know, he gets upset, and you know, he starts talking all kind of foolishness. You know, what I mean, he can't be objective. So we know when that happens, that you know, it's all about you know, for what I can see, is intimidation and fear. I think you know he's afraid of. The skill set of uh, Terrence Crawford, but let's continue. Terrence, do you feel? Yes, I feel like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not getting into we fall because we don't we don't even know that. But it's it's two different it's apples and oranges. Mm-hmm. One guy has he, he proved himself. One guy has been, you know, they, they tell you who he is. They tell you his opponents were because you didn't know who. What's the guy named um, the Russian kid? The, the the guy that he fought before, the Russian kid that, uh, what's that his name fought more? Terrence before a Mean Machine. Yeah, no, not that guy, but the other one, the first one, the, the one the title for. Oh, uh, Postol. Yeah, we didn't know who he was. Mm-hmm. They told us who he was. 
Then when he fought the other guy after that, the unified, we didn't know who that guy was. Jeff Horn. No, not Horn. Mm -hmm. The other guy. The African guy. Oh, uh, it, it Dongo. Yeah, we had no idea who he was. Mm -hmm. We still don't know who he was. The difference is, you see, like, these guys, like, say, when, even when, 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 um, Danny Garcia fought Amir Khan, Amir Khan fought other people and, and, and was winning. And did he win a title or something? He fought it. Because, I mean, come on, man. So it's like, these people, I mean, I, I'm not going to get into that because it's not even worth getting into. Mm -hmm. But we think about Danny Garcia, I mean, he did his thing. He did what he was supposed to do with Kell Brook. And you got to be happy for him. So, so based on what you said, because a lot of fans have also said that, hey, who has Terrence fought really? You know, like his, his resume mm -hmm. is lacking through no fault of Terrence's uh, because, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure if, if he could or he would have fought the, the guys that we all want him to see. Uh, but because of that, do you feel his place on pound for pound is exaggerated that he shouldn't? Be yes, high? yes. If you think about this, look. First of all, to be a champion, you need to 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 get to build a promotion company to have a champion. You have to have great matchmakers because you can't even get that kid who you putting all this money into to get to that level if you can't match them correctly to a skill set, right? So. All these other guys are fighting like, they're fighting like champions. They're matching them like a prospect still. See what I'm saying? Safe fights, because Sean Porter offered to fight him. Did you hear that? I know you heard that, because I mean. Yeah, you know, I, I spoke to him, yeah. They, they said that they were, they, they're just different business directions at this point for, for that fight. Who said that? Uh, well, Sean told, I asked Sean, like, hey, what, what happened? Did you talk to them? And they said, Sean told me, like, hey, you know, they, they, wa they wanted to go a different business direction. So What does that mean? We, we want, they're not, that means, that mean we want to get the big fight with the big money. We don't want to fight you because we could possibly lose to you. Mm. What other business direction is that? I mean, the big fight is either Pacquiao or Errol Spence. Yeah, I, I think they were alluding to the Pacquiao fight, which uh, Bob uh, revealed that uh, was... They, they had a deal in place already, but because of COVID, it, it didn't happen. <laughs> You're kind of rolling your eyes. You don't believe that? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's obvious he's upset about it. He wants to get his money back, whatever, he, right? Because he's talking well, about yeah, uh, yeah, money, no, money, 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 money. That surprised me, man. Sheesh. Coming from a promoter, saying that about your fighter, I was kind of like, ugh. Kind of shooting yeah, yourself in the foot. And listen. I guess you can speak like that when it's only like three or four of them left. I mean, like, like what are you doing? I mean, I don't know why. I mean, hey, come on, man. I have yeah. no idea. Thank you so much. Okay. So there you go. So basically what uh, Derek James is saying that Terrence Crawford got the weakest resume, like I said previously, of, of anybody uh, as a pound for pound fighter or whatever as a fighter. And uh, he's basically there talking about how, uh, you know, uh, Crawford, you know, hasn't really fought anybody, <laughs> okay? And that 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 uh, uh, Porter offered to fight him, and that it, it you know it, it didn't happen. But you know, again, this was before the, the Porter fight. So he's saying that basically that Crawford is ducking Porter, okay? Because Porter offered to fight him. All right. So you see all the things that he says about uh, Terence Crawford. Now remember, Terence Crawford is an undisputed champion, okay? At 140 pounds. He done knocked out everybody in 147 pounds, okay? But this was before he, he you know, he, he, well, this wasn't before he came to 147 because he was at 147 already. He had knocked out uh, Jeff Horn and, a, and a, number, a couple other people. But Derek James, you know, this was before he fought uh, Porter and Book. And so you see Derek James is trashing Terrence Crawford and saying that he hasn't really fought nobody, even though he came to welterweight and knocking people out. You know, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about that in in, in a second. But let's uh, hear what he uh, Derek James says about you know what more he had to say about uh, Crawford and the people that Crawford uh, fought. How do you see Ugas? You being a trainer, like do do you see him as a, as the biggest challenge of Arrow's career thus far? I think that I'm gonna say like I think that he is because he is very skillful fighter 
He's a phenomenal good counter puncher. He's a guy that tries to set you up. He's a guy who's very sneaky. He's very cunning. And you just have to be intelligent and, and in tune with everything he's doing, as opposed to having the idea of what you want to do. Because what you want to do is not what he's made present. Now, that description kind of sounded like Terrence Crawford, right? But he's he's, he's making that, uh, you know, he's talking about Ugas, right? This is what he's saying about Ugas. So here, you're seeing that Derek James rates Ugas much higher than he rates Terrence Crawford, right? A guy that's undisputed. And, ter you know, and, and not only undisputed, but undefeated. But he rates a guy like Ugas was lost like about four fights, you know, before he fought Spence. You know, he's rating him, you know, at higher than an undisputed guy in, in Terrence Crawford. So you see that Derek James is not being rational here, okay? And my point is that when it comes to Crawford, he can't be rational because he has an irrational fear of Crawford, okay? And this is what it's all about. So when you hear him talk, like he's talking about Ugas now, and then he talked the way he talked about Crawford, like Crawford is nobody. I mean, it tells you everything that you need to know. Okay? So uh, it is what it is. Let's continue. Derek, who's the, who's the better puncher when, when, we, when it goes down? Crawford got 10 knockouts in a row, but Spence looks like the heavy-handed, natural 10 guy. knockouts in a row against who? Some, some solid guys along the way, Sean Porter. To be fair, oh Sean man, Porter. Sean Porter, daddy said I was going to stop the fight before the fight. Mm. Didn't he say that? Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? I think he, he... No, no, no. What that meant was he was showing Sean he's still the boss. It was a power struggle going on in the ring. And what did Sean do when his dad did stop the fight? What did he do? When, he retired and didn't tell him. Asked him when the last time he talked to his dad. The night they was in the corner. He had not spoke so many more. Okay, what the hell does that have to do with the question? Okay, are you here? Derek James going to rant about uh, uh, Sean Porter and his dad, and you know, no wonder they almost fought when they met after this. I mean, what are you what are you talking about? I mean, what does it have to do with anything? The guy asks you a simple question, answer the question about you know, uh, you know, about Crawford's power. But again, Derek James can't be rational when anything, you know, in, anytime Crawford's name is mentioned, Derek James starts to cope and he starts to cap, okay? Now he's capping. He's talking about, you know, and ranting about, uh, 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 he went, going on into uh, Sean Porter's and, 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 and his father's personal business and talking about they don't talk to each other and all of this nonsense have nothing to do with the question, okay? Answer the question. The question was, what about the power? But, you know, he can't be rational when he's talking about Terrence Crawford, and we see that, okay? And so he goes off on this rant. But, you know, I just wanted to bring all that up to let you know that a lot of this negativity that we see that's been mentioned about Crawford by all these uh, uh, YouTubers over the years, you know, uh, you know them all. They, you know, the people that never wanted to see this fight happen. Uh, they all get their talking points from Derrick James, basically. Derrick James was the one to come up with all these talking points, okay? Because Derrick James never wanted to see this fight happen. This is it. This fight that's coming up on July 29th is Derrick James' nightmare, okay? This is a nightmare scenario for Derrick James. He never wanted to see this, never wanted this to happen, okay? And so, but here we are, okay? And, uh, you know, it's happening. So we're going to talk about, you know, so let's talk about the, uh, the fight, okay? Uh, Let's talk about what we think is going to happen, who's going to win, how it's going to play out. And uh, the way I see it is that, you know, this fight might disappoint some people, uh, maybe. I don't know. You know, it could be uh, anticlimactic in, in the sense that it might be a lot easier than people expect it to be. Or it could be tougher than people expect it to be. But we don't know. But we're going to see how it's going to play out. Okay. Uh, me personally... Uh, you know, I, I looked at, I saw these guys at the weigh-in and, you know, uh, Crawford, I mean, uh, you know, he looks in shape, uh, but Errol Spence looks in shape as well. And Errol, you know, I mean, his upper body was huge. I mean, Errol Spence looked like a middleweight in there. I think, uh, by the time the fight, uh, comes, uh, Errol Spence probably going to weigh close to 170 pounds. Uh, he's going to be uh, over 100, you know, he's going to be around middleweight, uh, weight in after you rehydrate and all of that, he's going to be heavy. 
Okay, he's gonna be big. He looks huge in there against, you know, I mean his upper body strength looks, you know, massive. So we're gonna see how this you know this all plays out. But uh yeah, Harold Spence is looking in shape. Uh Crawford looks in shape, you know, he's actually, you know, he, we see that he's smaller than uh smaller than, you know, Errol Spence, you know, like I said, Errol Spence looked like a, a, a middleweight in there. So, uh, how is this going to, you know, how is the fight going to play out? Uh, you know, who's going to win? You know, well, we all know what I think. I mean, I think that Crawford's going to win the fight. The question is, how is he going to win it? I mean, you know, is it guaranteed that he's going to win the fight? No, because, you know, Errol Spence is no uh, slouch in there. Uh, he can go in there and do some stuff that might, you know, upset uh, Crawford's rhythm, but I don't think this fight is going to play out the way a lot of people think it is. I think that Spence is going to come in there and, uh, you know, he's going to, I think he's going to box Crawford. He's not going to go in there and try to, you know, uh, walk Crawford down immediately and try to back him up immediately. I think he's going to back him up behind the jab. He's going to try to, you know, come forward, but he's going to come forward behind the jab. I think that Spence is going to, change his strategy in this fight. I was, I was, James is going to change his strategy. He's not going to go directly to Crawford. He's going to do, he's going to use the, the uh, Mikey Garcia strategy that is just box, try to use his, his reach and his length and uh, do everything on the outside away from Crawford. And then if you get a chance, if you, you know, if you, you get a, if you see an opportunity, then he's going to go to the body if he can. Uh, but I think in, I'm thinking they're going to try to stay away from the power of Crawford in this fight. I don't think they're going to be, you know, pressing Crawford and pressuring Crawford as much as as people think, you know, or, or as he say he's going to do. I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, uh, you know, he's saying that you know he, he's going to be pressing from the first bell. I don't see that happening. I think in a fight like this, the way you beat a guy like Terence Crawford, okay. Who's a who's a counter puncher? You know, for, first and foremost, the way you you know, it's to take him out of his natural game. You make him become the you 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 know it, how you beat a counter puncher is by counter punching the counter puncher. Okay, I, that I would think you 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 make the counter puncher come forward and you counter punch him instead of the other way around. You go you go forward and let the counter puncher do what he does best, which is counter punch. So. You'd force the, the, the counter punch out of his comfort zone, make him come forward, to, make him come to you, and you counter punch him. That's how uh, I think they're going to approach this fight. Uh, you know, with the boxing, I think Spence is going to try to move and box, and they're going to want Crawford to come forward, and, you know, they're going to try to, you know, pick him apart that way. Uh, if, if that's going to, you know, that's what I think. I, may, I could be wrong, but who knows? We'll see how it plays out. But that's what I think is going to happen. Is that going to work? Uh, I'm not, you know, it could maybe, but I doubt it because at the end of the day, I think what's what's going to determine this fight is going to be footwork and hand speed. Okay, and uh, I think that Crawford, you know, had the footwork uh, and then he has the hand speed and, you know, the combination punching. I think that's going to give Errol Spence a lot of trouble. The way I see this fight actually going is just the way that uh, uh, Fulton and Inouye went. It's going to be a similar uh, fight and a similar outcome. Okay, uh, Crawford is going to go in there and Spence is going to go in there. I think Crawford, Spence is going to be surprised be surprised by Crawford's power, even though I think Spence, you know, realizes how good Crawford is because as we all saw, Spence says himself that he watched all the fights and he saw all the Crawford fights, basically. He said it himself. It came out of his mouth. He saw all the Crawford. He's a fan of boxing. And that's that's one thing I know about Errol Spence. He's definitely a fan of boxing. And he's a great analyst of boxing as well. Okay. So he knows you know, the, the weaknesses and the strengths of various fighters. Uh, he's very good at that. I mean, extremely uh, good at you know, uh, assessing fighters' strengths and weaknesses. And I'm sure he has assessed uh, Terence Crawford's strengths and weaknesses, and I'm pretty sure that he knows about the power of Terence Crawford. That's what they're probably worried about, the talent, okay, the speed. You know, uh, according to Derek James, Terence Crawford got cat-like reflexes, but according to Derek James, those reflexes don't last because age, uh, you know, is a factor. And I, I, that's another thing because why this fight never happened for so long. I think Derek James was trying to age out Terence Crawford because he constantly refers to that about, you know, uh, how uh, cat-like reflexes and, you know, talent can go with age. And 
you know, he said that about Crawford that, you know, uh, and he said about uh, Roy Jones, you know, uh, when he was out there capping about Roy Jones, trying to act like he didn't remember Roy Jones' name. You know, this guy is a big capper. But anyway, uh, you know, uh, again, Derek James had a lot to do, I think, with this fight being delayed to this point because they were trying to wait to see signs of uh, weakness in Terrence Crawford, if him slowing down and, you know, so forth and so on. So, you know, again, uh, I think Derek James had a lot to do with that. But again, yeah, so the way the fight you know, it's probably going to play out, like I said, in the way, in the way and Fulton played out. Uh, Crawford is going to show his strength, his power, his speed. And Errol Spence is going to be a little bit taken aback by all of that. He's going to be surprised. Maybe not surprised, but, you know, uh, he's going to be, he's, it's going to be a, a lot more difficult uh, than he expected it to be. And, you know, he, I think Crawford probably going to be hit a lot harder than he expected. And uh, I think the fight, like I said, is going to go just the way the uh, in a way fight went. Uh, if it goes that long, I don't think it's going to go that long. I think it's probably going to end around the seventh round, probably. Me personally, if the fight gets past the first round, okay, uh, I think it might end somewhere between the fourth and the seventh. I think Crawford will, you know, uh, end the fight somewhere between the fourth and the seventh. Now, I could be totally wrong and, you know, uh, Spence could, you know, win the fight, you know, uh, but I doubt it. I, I just don't see it happening. I think the hand speed, the foot speed, I think the, you know, the IQ, uh, the strength, the power, all of these things, you know, I think uh, is on uh, Crawford at the advantage, and I think that uh, he's going to use it to his advantage in the fight against uh, Spence, and I think he's going to stop Spence in this fight. I'm saying somewhere between the, if it gets past the first, it's going to be somewhere between the fourth and the seventh round. The fight is going to be over, okay? And uh, we're going to have a a, a new uh, two-time undisputed champion in Terence Crawford. And basically, that's how I see this fight playing out. You know, I think uh, I think the the speed and the hand speed and the foot speed and the power is going to be too much for uh, Errol Spence. The boxing abilities, I think. I mean, again, you know, how can Errol Spence win this fight? You know, even though I'm, I'm saying that, you know, that there's a lot of, he has a lot of, uh, there's a lot of advantages that Crawford have against him in this fight. Well, you know, we have to look at uh, the skill set of uh, Errol Spence. I mean, he's a, first of all, he's big, as they say. Uh, okay, so that's our advantage. Number, you know, even though I don't really think size got much to do with boxing, uh, because the game is called boxing, not size or strength or jabbing. Okay, it's called boxing, so it's an overall set of, uh, stuff you have to put together and execute in the ring so uh but Errol Spence has advantage you know a lot of people you know uh underestimate Errol Spence I'm not one of those people I think that even though I think Crawford's gonna stop him I think that Errol Spence can win this fight as well if he does a certain things if he stays you know keep that jab in Crawford's face and box and moves and try to counter punch Crawford when Crawford's coming in okay I think you know he has a a, a route to victory you know if you can keep Crawford away and keep Crawford from unleashing, you know, any of his power punches on on him. I just think that the first time Crawford landed a solid punch, uh, Errol Spence is going to be in trouble. But the same thing could go for Crawford. The first time uh, Errol Spence landed a solid punch, uh, you know, Terrence could be in trouble as well. So we'll see how it all plays out. But I just think that Crawford has a better chance of landing than uh, Errol Spence does because of his, you know, because of Terence Crawford's uh, speed and his power and the fact that uh, Errol Spence doesn't really move his head a lot, and you know uh, he did, you know, he's basically uh, depending on wearing his, his opponents down, and you know, uh, I just don't see that happening with Crawford. It may, it may, it may happen. It may, you know, it could happen. I mean, who knows? You know, uh, you never know what to expect when you get in that ring. Uh, but, uh, I just don't see that happening. I, I see Crawford beating him, you know, uh, with his speed, his hand speed and his power and his, his versatility, you know, but again, Errol Spence has his own skills. He's a great jabber. And, you know, the thing about Errol Spence and the jab is that, which is one of my thing in boxing is that to me, the jab is the best, uh, punch in boxing, uh, uh not the best, but it's, it, uh, the jab is, 
is indispensable. You need a jab. Everything works off the jab. And if you got a good jab, you're halfway there. And that Errol Spence have an excellent jab. Not it's not a good jab. It's not a great jab. It's a superb jab. It's a jab that he, he jabs the way you're supposed to jab. Okay, and that you know gives him a lot of advantages in a lot of his fights. I've seen him win a lot of fights because of the jab alone. Okay, you know, keeping a jab out there, keeping it stiff, keeping it hard. And then when he comes back. He's, he's responsible in the fact that he brings his hand back to the side of his face to protect himself. So he doesn't move his head a lot, but he blocks a lot of punches. Okay, that's, you know, so you can block punches two ways. You can block them by slipping them, or you can block them by just blocking them with your hands. And he's a guy who blocks punches with his hands, not with, like, moving his head and slipping. Uh, where we see Terrence Crawford is the other way. He, you know, he blocks punches too, but he slips them more than he blocks them. Okay, he depends on his speed, as Derek James says, which. You know, according to Derrick James, if you depend on your speed, what happens when your speed goes? Then, then your technique has to come in and, and protect you. And he's saying that Errol Spence has the technique, even though he might not have the talent. He has the technique, the things that, you know, will always carry you through a fight, whether you're old or you're young. You don't have to depend on any talent for technique. Technique is something that you learn and develop. And so Derrick James is saying that Errol Spence has the technique and that, Terence Crawford has the talent. But I think that Terence Crawford has talent and technique, not just talent, as Derek James is saying. So I'm thinking that if he's saying that Crawford has talent and Spence has technique, I see this. They both have talent in a way, and they both have technique. I just think that uh, Crawford's technique is better, and is, you know he has a lot of talent, even though I've heard Errol Spence say, he has technique, but he don't, you know, like him him himself, he doesn't have any talent, but he have a lot of technique, and that, that's what Crawford doesn't have, which is kind of a weird thing to say that you don't have technique, but you have, you know, you don't have talent, but, you know, but I think that the reason why Errol Spence said that is because a lot of people, people talk so much about, you know, uh, Crawford's uh, talent and his skills and his IQ that, you know, uh, they are always hearing that from people, okay? Every time a question comes up about Crawford, talk about ta Crawford's IQ, his, his talent. And I think Derek James and, you know, even Errol Spence is getting tired of hearing about Crawford. Everywhere they go, there's people talking about Crawford, Crawford, Crawford. Now, uh, supposedly, Errol Spence is the A-side in this fight, but it, 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 everybody's treating Crawford like he's the A-side, you know? Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, he's, 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 the, the odds are in his favor. You know, the book is, even the book is... I could treat them like the A-side. He, he, the odds are in his favor. So, Errol Spence supposed to be the A-side in this fight, but everything looks is looking like Crawford is the A-side. The odds, the way people talk about the fight, the whole nine yards. So, I can understand where Errol Spence is coming from being upset about that. I mean, you know, I, I get it. But again, people, uh, my prediction for this fight, even though, you know, you can't always predict these things and anything could happen in the fight, uh, you know, if the fight goes past the seventh, it's going to end somewhere between the fourth. If it gets past the first, it's going to end somewhere between the, the, the fourth and the seventh round. I think Crawford is going to stop uh, uh, Spence. He's going to catch Spence coming in with a shot, and he's going to hurt him, and then he's going to finish him off from there. That's how I see the fight playing out. With that said, uh, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, may the best man win this fight. Uh, you know, this is a great fight. I'm glad it's happening. I'm glad Spence finally accepted the fight. Even though we had to drag him kicking and screaming into the ring, he finally did get in there. And, uh, you know, uh, he's making the fight happen. Because I, I really believe that his trainer, Derek James, was totally against this fight all the way because of his fear of Terrence Crawford. But I think Errol Spence, you know, to his credit, uh, decided that, you know, win or lose, he's going to take this fight because it's a big fight. It's a legacy fight. And if he wins, he's on top of the world, okay? And, uh, you know, why not take the fight? What else you got, you know, fight? You, you, what are you going to do, fight one of his mandatories and probably end up losing, you know, against Ennis or Stan Ionis or one of these guys and not for the same amount of money that he's going to get against Crawford? It's a legacy. It's the biggest fight in boxing. Everybody's talking about it. Win or lose, there's no losers in this fight, really, because win or lose, uh, both fight, you know, both of these fighters is, is going to, uh, you know, uh, Make a lot of money and and make and, and they're gonna get a lot of eyes on them for this fight because everybody's talking about this fight. Everybody wants to see this fight, so it's a win-win for everybody. Okay, and uh, this fight should happen a long time ago. But again, with that said, I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, this is TBE Boxing saying, "May the best man win." 
I'm out. Just love you for riches, huh? Pretty rich, show me titties, huh? And I got the glitzy, run up on me, I'ma meet you, get it?